Welcome to Engineering Scale Models, where the details live. I'm Jason, your host, and today we're going to do something unusual and different for the channel. I know I've been building some 1 3 50th scale ships like the Alaska, the North Carolina, um, that LST. I'm doing, trying to do some haul detail, haul detail on the Indianapolis. And then I am working on a video for building some quad mount bulvers, 40 millimeters for the Alaska, North Carolina, you know, any of the U.S. Navy warships that need those. And tiny, tiny photo etch, um, about 80 pieces per quad mount, and you need about 28, so maybe 20 quad mounts for the Alaska, another 20 for the North Carolina, plus filming it all has taken a toll, so I just, I'm just going to do this, this aircraft. Um, it was in my stash, I don't know where it came from, I don't know how I got it, but I got it, it's not anything crazy, um, you see it's on the bench here, it is a, it is an IAR-81C, the Ruminarian Defender. Rum Romanian, Romanian, maybe Romanian Defender. I'm not sure. It is from Special Hobby. It's in 132nd scale. And it is SN. Hold on, let's see if I can get that better. It's SN32068. Um, it does come with some resin parts and does say limited edition. Really, the only artwork is the one here. It looks pretty cool. Looks like a big old bomber in the background. I'm not sure what that is. Um, tree sure it's a World War II plane. It's got some pretty insane barrels sticking out of the front of the wings. So I'm gonna just look at it. I don't know. I don't know what it contains. I just I wanted to build something different and just take a break from tons of PE. So here's what's in the box. We got the decal scheme and just an itty bitty tiny bit of photo etch. Hopefully that doesn't come up until later in the build. We have some clear parts. And then we do get some resin, what appears to be exhaust. And I'm not sure what this other resin bits are. Let's zoom me in a little bit here, guys. Little resin bits there. And then I've already rebagged this. Um, I didn't wash it. Some people say wash it. Some people don't say wash it. I don't care. I'm not really worried about it. But it contains one, two, three, four, uh, basically five sprues plus you know the resin and the decals and the photo etch and all that stuff. So put that back in the box. Look at the manual here. I just grabbed this kit. I wanted to do. I haven't done an aircraft on the channel yet. I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not even sure I'm going to post this. I guess if you see it, I posted it. So it's basically in the late 1930s. The Polish PZL P.11 and the P.24 all metal high wing fighter planes were produced under license by the IAR. The Industria Aeronautica Romania. It was quite clear that such type of design was nearing obsolete in the future, belonging to low wing fighters with retractable undercarriages and enclosed canopies. A design team led by Ion Gozo was formed with the aim to project a modern warplane of such sorts. So basically, in the 1930s, the uh, Polish needed a fighter plane, and the one they had just didn't cut it. I guess that's the PZL. So there's a couple variants of this. There's a B and a C with subversions. Um, the C, which was designed for a fighter bomber roll during the spring of 1941, although it served in both air interceptors and ground attack rolls. The 81C was the most numerous subversion to be produced. 
about 300 to 450. That's a lot of aircraft for that time period. Deliveries starting early in 1943, so middle of the war of World War II. Total production for the 80s and 81 series totaled about 450 units, but ceased as well as the production of the BF-109 type that had only just begun after the American bombing of Barroso factory on April 16th, 1944. So, I take it Germany had invaded Poland at this time. So, I guess these people were building these planes for Germans to fly in 1943 while also building BF-109s. So, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I really don't know anything about this plane. But, like I said, I don't know how I got the kit. So, it has a wingspan of 11 meters, a length of 8.97 meters, um, 16.5 square meters for the wing area, operational ceiling of 12,000 or 10,000 meters, maximum speed at 5,000 meters is 485 kilometers per hour. Okay, weapons, two, two times. 7.92 millimeter FN Browning machine guns and two MG 15120 Molser 20 millimeter cannons. Two droppable fuel tanks could be carried on racks under the wings in place of bombs, plus a 250 kilogram bomb on the center fuselage fuchsial, rack. Although fitted. Okay. Although fitted during, there's not a continuation of the story, is there? Okay. Well, I was getting into the story there, and it's it's just that's it. There's it's not. It's a fuse lord, although fitted. So that's the end of that. So basically, that's the plane. It can carry a bomb, fuel tanks. Here's your sprue maps in the um, in the front two pages. Here we got a resin parts down here. It tells you what to remove, clear parts, and I'm not sure what this little doohickey is over here. And then we got some etch parts. It's your L sprue. So it doesn't look too bad. It really doesn't. So it looks like you can build an 80 or an 81. So I'm not going to go through the build instructions because we're going to start building it here. So we got the um, 81C right here. Um, this doesn't look bad. It is number 429 flown by Adjid. Well, I'm not even going to attempt to butcher these names. This was from the summer of 44. So I'm not sure if they were liberated by them. And over here we have number 329. And uh, on May 1944, on 31st of May, during a dogfight with the United States Air Force plane, the machine got hit into its port wing and flap. However, the victor managed to bring his crippled mount back to the base. So... I mean, they're fighting the United States Air Force, so I would assume they were fighting with the Germans, because probably because they were forced to. I'm not sure about this. They said I know a little bit about World War II, but not much about the aircraft. I mean, I know the major aircraft like your BF 109, your Spitfires, your Tempest, your um, Typhoon, which is my favorite. Um, so. Uh, then we got one October 1947. The aircraft lacked a wire aerial and was flown sans its wings, guns, and lower undercare coverage. So this one had gun covers on the guns and a lower undercarriage. Okay. And then our last choice is number 399. And then, what was this one, 1944, 
took part took the controls of this machine took part in several fights against United States Air Force uh, warplanes later it was transferred and put into action against the Vermont over Hungary and Czechoslovakia on May 8, 1945, the plane was shot down by enemy anti-aircraft fire near, if I kind of butcher it, and so with somebody in the cockpit. So, yeah, I'm not going to hack these names up. So it looks like this last model, uh, D here, uh, ended up fighting against the Americans and then got li they got liberated in fighting against the Germans after that so let's just um, I'm definitely gonna rule out C because I like the gun sticking out and I like the aerial um, the wire aerial wire I like that so that leaves us A B and D so A's got a little bit of that um, model I just like man my words it's it's literally 3 30 in the morning and I can't sleep so if my words are messed up I deeply apologize for that so so they, they all seem to have that but I think I'm gonna do the later one yeah I'm gonna do the later one I like the underside of the, oh yeah oh, yeah I'll have that same underside so, yeah, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do D. So, basically got olive green, light blue, gray. I might just build this as a build review and not even paint it. I'm not sure. Depending on how far I get today and see what, because I can't paint at this, this time of day. The compressor will wake people up. So I can't do that. So let's take a look at step one. And we need the D9 and some F5s and F33s. So it looks like we're going to start with some cockpit stuff and then some decals. Okay, well this seems fairly easy. Let's get our mask and stuff out of the way Anyways. Let's grab our spruce. So we need where we D and F. So there's F. This looks like D right here. Uh, D. Alright, he's back. I'm gonna get out my two cutters here. If you have any questions about the tools I use, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to respond. I'm not going to really go all out on this thing, so I need D9. Oh, are there really not numbers on the parts? What? You got to be kidding me. This, this is my first special hobby kit. I own a couple, but I never really noticed anything. Oh, that's definitely broken. I'll fix that on the sprue, but there's no numbers on the parts. Wow, there is no numbers anywhere identifying these parts. So I guess you have to refer back to the sprue tree. Is that what you have to do? Oh my god, you do? Wow. So here is the D sprue. So this is definitely... I knew this was D9, but when it comes to all this little stuff here, that's going to be annoying. That is definitely going to be annoying. Wow. So I'm going to cut this. Wow. So there you go. If you don't want numbers on your parts, get this kit. If you want to flip through the book forever, 
this is the perfect kit for you so so I'm gonna clean that up in a minute wow this is so that's the D sprue so now I need F3 and two F5s so the two F5s of course are gonna be the two broken parts so I'm gonna to have to fix those real quick so to fix these I'm just gonna take some extra thin here move my book out of the way I'm just gonna glue them at the broken point here make sure they're set in the right spot yeah, that's that one. I'll let that one sit for a minute. Where is F3? Is it... F3. Is F3 straight? Oh, F33. Okay, that makes more sense. So F33 is over here. This is funny. I was like, oh yeah, this is gonna be quick and easy. Just gonna throw this kit together and just make a quick video and just have a good old time. But no, it's gotta be it's gotta be all crazy and weird. Okay, so Alright, so now I'm going to glue this one together because that one's not, wow, this one is really bad. So, I'm just going to line that up. This is not the first kit that I have gotten with this delicate stuff broken like this. And as I recall, I think I did a quick unboxing of this a while back and I mentioned this that you could just fix it up like this right here just hold it for a minute and cut the let it I'm just gonna cut that off now because it looked like you know the way this is here it looks like it was a complete short shot and like even here it's not connected and I think it's supposed to be so overall like a completely crappy uh, molding on this kit I mean I probably should have sent it back or complained or something but like I said I don't remember where it came from or how I got it it's not something I would have purchased so it could have been sent to me I'm not sure it was it was it was about six or seven maybe even longer a year ago or something when I got it so um, not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it if it was something I knew I paid for I would have definitely definitely complained but I'm not gonna I mean I want to fix the problems cuz I mean that's what this channel is about is fixing the issues. So it's going to be next to impossible to clean up. I have to cut that nib off with a with a scalpel. good sometimes when these parts sit flat on the bench you can well I wasn't even doing that on camera guys I'm sorry sometimes when these parts sit flat on the bench you can just you can just come in here with your knife and just shave it off Maybe not this one. So 
was kind of sitting at an angle. I'm gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna get a sanding stick out here. I'm gonna use a flexi file stick, and I'm gonna just come in a little bit and come back. So you're in my workspace. I'm just gonna work this here. I, I just I built a couple aircraft. I'm just not. I'm not basically I'm not good at aircraft like seams and things like this and you know I just need I just wanted to glue some plastic to be honest with you and you know where I'm at on the North Carolina and then where I would be at on the Alaska is basically all photo etch so the LST that's just even even a ton more photo etch so I was like well you know when you get that way just start a new kit I guess I guess that's the best way to do it so I'm gonna cut these little pieces off here Yeah, my head was in that shot. Sorry, guys. Again, I'm just making this video for something to do at 3 in the morning. So, sorry if it's not up to my normal standard. I'm not even going to really edit anything out of it. I'm just going to post it, you know, the raw footage. So, might run it through the editor just to compress it a little bit to help with upload time thought about streaming it but there was some streaming issues with my microphone and at least with the editor I can up the volume of the microphone so you guys can actually hear me because it's, it's a fantastic USB microphone but you just have to mess with it and edit just drop that part. Oh, I can't believe I found that. Cannot believe I found that. That's that worked out. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We got D9. We got it going this way, and then we got. Alright, so we got. broken so I'm gonna have to have to just get it into place here so the straight end goes to the top just like that and we're gonna hold it while we wait for the glue to dry which is the, it's the to me a quick set, so it dries pretty quick. I'm trying to mess with this exposure. There you go, guys. Sorry about that. Just realized it was a little dark. Which is weird, because I just figured out that I could do that with the camera pretty easily. I didn't know it was an option. Actually, guy on another channel, John Kessler's channel, he does hobby board games and stuff and he's a great guy and he taught me a few tricks with the camera because I recommended the camera to him and he was able to do more stuff with it than I'm doing with it so yeah, this is a disaster 
yeah, with these broken parts, this is this is a nightmare. I was hoping for an easy, easy, easy build, and then I got this broken part on the first step one broken parts. So, imagine this was some return kit that some company sent me. It's like probably because I did some promotion for them or something. I helped them out. Who knows? But definitely gonna have some fit issues later. I can feel it. So that goes there. And then this one. So that's going to be weird. go on the side and I think it goes on top. Just like that. I'll glue that one first. Look at these broken points, broken parts have a lot to mount to. So you know if they were freestanding and they had to actually support something, this would be a totally different problem. Have to replace the legs with the wires, like some thin brass rod or something. And that is not something I want to get to get into today. So we're going to do the best we can here. best we can on this. I didn't even think I would need tweezers on this kit. I'm already having to use tweezers. Okie dokie. So we're going to let that sit for a good minute here. While we look at step two. I love photo etch. Fantastic. So we need D40 and D27. So let's, let's hunt down those pieces first. So D40. D27. So D40. So if we look at this sprue here, I'm zoomed in. I want to get this on camera. So 40 is this piece here. Right here is 40. So we're going to cut that off. Cut that off. And then we need I it was 26 or 27. Hold on. Horrible remembering numbers anymore. It's 27. So 27 is right. Oh, yeah, right here is 27. So we're going to cut that off. Alright, let's clean these up here and see what we got. Now there is, oh, wow, there's like seam lines on this thing. Oh, 
I'm not an airplane guy, but as a modeler, I, I wouldn't recommend this kit. I mean, I at this point, I mean, I might change my mind later, and it just some fantastic thing happens. But in my current situation, I'm like, yeah, no. Oh. So, yeah. Like, the sprue gate could have been on the flat part, I think. I mean, why put it on the round part? I mean, I guess because you're already going to be sanding off the massive mold seam. So we we'll like put, put a sprue gate there too, because they're always gonna have to gonna have to work it anyways. So I don't know. I know these are like small run kits, or I don't know what the word is called. It's just, words are hard at three something in the morning. Let me tell you, they are hard. So we're gonna make do with what we have here. If you guys don't like the video, don't watch it. I'm not really worried about it. So, let's see here. I mean, I have better content. This is just not going to be one of them. First of all, I pulled the box out. I opened it. I said, oh, it looks like all the sprues are here. And I turned on the camera. So, that's the prep work I did on this. Normally, I go through the steps of what I'm going to do. You know, kind of find the parts. You know, discover that there's no part numbers <laughs> on anything. Which is hilarious. So, but, you know, now we know. So, we just flip back and forth with this book here. So, we have this. And this, and there's apparently a half moon shape, so you can't. You can't really get it wrong, I guess. Oh, come on, seriously? Half moon shape that doesn't fit? Well, that's a press fit right there, if I ever see a press fit. A tiny part like that with a press fit? That's crazy. Alright, so I'm going to add a little bit of glue in there, and then glue this up here. And then that other part, whatever happened to it. It's nice having a bigger workbench, but things get lost. Again, I'm starting to take photos of everything I do. Not, not of this. Not, not of this. So it's like doing step by step stuff on on the computer. I'm taking photos. I'm taking photos with my with my Canon camera, and I'm just trying to take better photos. I kind of flash because. I don't know, I can't get light, and people told me to try a flash, and then the stupid trigger won't work, it won't trigger the flashes. The little trigger triggers the flashes, but the camera won't trigger the trigger the trigger the flashes, and the spot where I have my, I designed my little white box for my camera set up, it's too short for the flash to be on top of the camera. Plus it's like a macro lens, so I gotta get really close. So I cry, I'm like, oh, wireless trigger, that's fantastic. It says it's for a Canon camera. So that's what I did. I got that. So I get this. And I can get it, if I press the button, I can get it to activate the camera like it's supposed to do. If I press the button, I can test the flash like I'm supposed to do. But if I press the camera button to take a picture, it does not set off the flash. So, I don't know. They say it's for my, my model camera. Um, and I have two of them. It, it, I ended up getting two of them um, because each flash came with a set. So, and they work together, but just not with the camera. So, 
that's going to be tomorrow's adventure or today's adventure later today um, when I get to that part okay so we need L12 which is going to be photo etch I'm not putting the photo etch on guys I'm sorry I'm just not in the mood so that part doesn't go on for a minute no yeah it does Well, it appears I can put on D17, 18, and 19. And kind of clip on the back there. D36 onto there. It's kind of a weird. Uh, sorry, guys, let me correct that. It's kind of a weird. I mean, the arrows are cool because it shows where everything's going. But it's like there's step one, step two. So now it has me arrows pointing to put everything together. So do I put the the panel in and then put this in? Do I put that on there first? Is this is from is this from step one and this is from step two, or is this do this first and this? So I'm not sure. So we're gonna figure it out. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not familiar with these special hobby kits, so I you, you, you build kits from a certain manufacturer, you start to understand how they lay things out, but I haven't discovered that yet from them. So we're looking for 17, 18, and 19 on the D sprue. So again, we have to refer to this paper, so I'm going to do that. I'll tell you, this is the perfect kit for this new workbench because before I could never have the kit instructions laid out and build and the sprues and everything at hand it's um, very nice so it's these pieces right here one two and three so probably could have figured that out without the without the sprue map to tell us what the parts are but you know it's there. Might as well use it. I, I do find it odd that the numbers aren't on the sprue. If you guys experience that with with these special hobby kits or any kit in general, uh, will you guys let me know in the comments? Because you know, I'm not normally one who trolls for comments, because whatever. I do like likes and subscriptions. That's cool. But comments I, I don't really understand it I mean I respond you know normally a heart face or a, you know if you ask a question I try to answer it but I do read all the comments the I mean the few I get so you know some most of the time I got w one or two solid commenters on every video and love minis thank you for commenting on all my videos and all the all the support you give my channel I mean you're like You've been with me since the beginning, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, yeah, you've been there since the beginning, so I appreciate that. So, and I know you do love your minis, so he actually won the last giveaway. He got himself uh, um, some terrain, um, some orc workshop or something uh, from Warhammer that I had that I. I put together. I was gonna, I was gonna prime it, but you know, I'll tell you, life gets in the way so often. And I try to do things, but the current giveaway I already have worked out. So it's twenty-five dollars in hobby, hobby stuff that I put together, and um, I'm gonna pick the winner on Saturday. Um, but today's the eighth, Wednesday the eighth, so ninth, tenth. So like the twelfth, I'll pick the winner and I'll announce it that Monday. So, because it's weird, because there was a lot of ways to enter. So, you know, if you were a Patreon, you got a certain amount of entries. So, you know, you can still join if this video goes up in time. But I'll do more giveaways in the future if this one goes well. So, yeah, if this goes well. I'll do some more in the future. And it'll be all good. So, okay, now I need D12, which is this piece right here. I'm not even going to look it up and tell. 
already getting annoyed with the not having the part number on the sprue. This video is already 40 minutes. I don't know how much longer I'm going to make it. I have to keep dealing with this stuff. So, and this video goes out this week. Um, it's not the, it's not the content I wanted to deliver, but the whole life getting in the way thing. So, come across some recent financial issues. So, really having trouble sleeping. So, I'm trying to drown my sorrows in some modeling. See how that works out. I do have an eBay store. Um, eBay's give me, I don't know if they're giving me crap, but they only let me post five items and I have I have a lot of nice stuff, brand new in the box. A Warhammer, um, and I also have some used stuff like some airbrushes and things like that I want to sell, but you know, eBay's only let me post five things at a time. I don't know if it's a day or at a time total, so I don't I don't know that whole I don't know the whole eBay situation yet. So I'm trying to trying to work through it, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, does that go on that or in front of it? This is going to go on to this thing here. Okay, so that sits up top. Okay, so this is actually the pilot. So the, this is actually like a surround for the pilot. Just, I don't know, I guess that's normal. So, I am having a hard time, guys. I'm sorry. Probably should just be done with it, but. day of stuff not working out. Alright guys, here we go. That's glued on. It looks like it's sitting right. It looks like it's got to lead back a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to put... I'm gonna actually going to use regular Tamiya now. Because I want to have a little bit of working time to get this all lined up because I gotta get that other part in there so I want a little bit more working time so I'm gonna use the regular stuff This video is not meant to show any kind of technique or that I'm a great builder. It's just something to do at 3 in the morning. So. Alright. Okay, guys. Let's see here. So, that is that. Probably bring this in and our P 
piece here, and that's gonna go on there. Okay, that's kind of got some location. I'm always a huge fan of location. Wow. Not much location, but there's a little bit there. So we'll see how it goes. So, like I was building, uh, I did a build review of Tacom's King Tiger. And I'm sorry I couldn't put the final video on YouTube yet. It was for a for a customer that just wanted to see like wanted a review of it a build review of it and he was cool with me building like update videos but he wanted the final review to like play in his store which I didn't know so I, I gave him the raw footage well the edited footage but he had the raw footage I still have a copy of the video but he asked me not to post it so, I'm not going to post it. So, but it was just a, just a build video. Apparently he bought a bunch of the kits or something. And people were having issues with them or something. I don't know. He just, he, I, I, I was there, I picked up a kit. And he's like, hey, you've built these type before. I'm like, yeah, I built Tacon kits all the time. Because people are having trouble assembling these things, could you put one together and you know show how you did it? And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's just that's what I did. So, all right, so this is gonna go in here, hopefully. It says it goes in there. That's gonna go into. Yeah, see, this is where the broken parts are coming into play now. Okay, so it fits in one. Oh, okay, yeah, I just broke it all. Wow. I just snapped. You saw that, guys? Wow, this is a... Wow. Well, I just went the rest of the way, so... It's the problem. It doesn't fit. That is a super, super tight fit for a piece with fragile things on it like that. If I would have paid attention, I would have caught that. It's going to take. Just going to clean this up a little bit right there. So this fits. And then I'll piece it back together. Oh, even that corner is just insane. I don't know. This kit is the bane of my existence already. I mean, I wanted something fun just to glue some plastic together, and I get this. So that's, that's the way it goes, let me tell you. I was like, I got. I got a Ryefield Tiger kit that I'm working on and I'm doing the building technique series for it but I'm at the point where I'm going to do the PE and I'm like so I'm not going to so I didn't want to jump on that kit and then I got some other kits that are painted already and I can't paint anymore for a while so I don't want to like half painted and then half unpainted glued together and then there's no way to no way to touch that up. Wow this is going bad. Wow 
this is this is some kind of this is some kind of hell of it here. This this normally doesn't go like this for me, guys. Well, I'm sure glad I'm not working on that 40 millimeter bolfers right now because I would be going crazy with that. Just crazy. Okay, so now let's try to glue this on here. I'm going to have to let that sit. And I'm going to call it at this because I'm not going to, this is going to have to dry. This is not going to be some quick fix. This is going to have to dry for a while because of the issue of it not fitting. Try to not run glue down my finger. So, I have to fix this mess tomorrow and wedge it in there behind that um, cock, cock, cockpit dashboard instrument panel. Okay, so I'm going to sum this up as an awful, awful build session. Um, if this gets posted, laugh at me in the comments and just dislike the video because it's awful. It's just horrible building skills. It's everything what not to do. You can jump over to my social media and tell me, wow, what were you thinking? Why would you post this video? Why would you even break all those parts? I don't know. You know, hit me up on social media, do that. And if you feel super sorry for me about that incident, then this whole, wow, I wanted something easy and I got this, you can visit my Patreon page and support the channel. But, you know, I do enjoy glue and plastic and I do enjoy building models, but... It started with broken parts, and then it just it just tumbled into more broken parts, more broken parts, more broken parts. So at uh, 52 minutes, I'm gonna call it here, guys. Um, I'd say it's gonna be a fantastic day, hopefully, because I wish you guys a fantastic day, and I hope I, my day looks up from here. Thank you guys so much, and you guys are awesome. Thank you.